Let's go over a power user file manager named Crusader today. This one's really interesting. Like I like to use it when I'm constantly copying files back and forth and I want a GUI to do so, but uh, I find the stock file manager just lackluster, you know, whether that be Nautilus or Dolphin. Crusader really has a lot more options, like a ton. So let's jump into it today, go over this file manager because I absolutely love it. It's an amazing power user tool to really uh, get a lot done in the graphic user interface without dropping a terminal. This video is brought to you by Pluralsight. I've used them to learn Citrix Zen app, Windows Server, and Linux administration. Click the link in the description and learn your skill today. So let's launch into Crusader. It is a great file manager. You get kind of overwhelmed with the initial screen though. You got a lot going on. You got two panes. You got all these F keys down here, which the F keys, I'm just gonna go over real quick. F2 to rename a file. So if you're in this and you wanna rename that file, you'd hit F2 and that's pretty much the same. F3 would view the file, that just viewing so you can't type anything into it. So there's a good way to, you know, just view a file without editing it. But let's say you want to edit it, you could hit press F4. And now you can actually edit the file if you like, but we're not going to do that. And uh, discard changes. And then F5 to copy if you want to just type in the pass, uh, path you want to actually copy this file to, you can do that. F6 to move, just like copy. F7 makes a directory in this folder. So if we wanted to go new, it makes a directory, but likewise, you can actually delete this with F8. So we can just go F8 and say trash and it'll actually do that. And then F9, let's say we're in pictures. We can just hit F9. It'll pull up the actual terminal. Um, now I link this to not the built-in terminal, but I actually like to launch into Terminator, but they do have a built-in terminal as well. If you go up to window, you can kind of see uh, there's the toggle full sp screen embedded terminal if uh, you need, but if you look over here, you'll see show embedded terminal control alt T. So if you're in here and you hit control alt T, it'll just pull up down here. So if there's just a quick command, you can do that. Likewise, control alt T takes it away. But if you go the embedded and then you go full screen, you can actually look at it at full screen, full screen back, and then remove the embedded. So that's just some cool little hotkeys. I like it. It kind of shows you all these things. And if you want to stay on this and you go control T, you can actually do multiple tabs so you can actually have way more stuff running in the background and sort your tabs out in both tabs. So let's say you're in downloads over here, but you also are like, OK, I need a tab for documents as well. And then you can kind of do a lot. It's just very, very powerful with the tab utilities. Uh, other things is obviously learn the hotkeys if you're going to be in here a whole bunch. but. Uh, personally, I've kind of already gone over the things I use a ton in here. Uh, another cool thing is like, let's say you're in pictures and you want to see what the disk usage is of pictures. You can hit OK and it shows you what's utilizing most of the, the actual uh, size on here. So it's really powerful, gives you kind of a percent breakdown and then shows you the whole size. Um, so very, very cool. Definitely do this. It, it's amazing. Other things, if you're synchronizing folders, like let's like, say so you want to synchronize pictures to downloads, and likewise, it'll actually copy all the files back and forth, which is kind of neat. I don't really like using this as I like to use symbolic links and other things. Um, so it's a little bit different, but if we do a compare, you can see what it would actually sync back and forth. If uh, the, where I see this like being very powerful is if I was syncing, let's say a network drive or something like that to a local folder, you could honestly mount it uh, under a specific folder and just copy it back and forth, which is really neat. Now, having said that, we're, we've been doing all this in the home folder. What happens if you need like root access and you need to move a whole bunch of stuff around in the system? You can actually do this. There's something called start root mode and it'll give you a little warning. It says, hey, this is root mode. You can damage your system. Furthermore, running UI applications as root is insecure and it can allow attackers to gain root access. So definitely be cautious when doing this, but if you launch into it, we'll go ahead, type our root password, you'll see it'll pop up over here. And then we can go into like, let's say over here into like the home or let's go to ETC and copy our F stab over into the downloads folder per se. So if we come over to here, we can actually just take this, drag, drop, 
and then it'll say copy link whatever you want so you can actually establish symbolic links here but let's copy it just so we kind of have the fstab file and uh, as you see this is actually owned let's uh actually let's get out of here real fast i'm gonna quit out but let's take a look at its properties you can actually do a lot with permissions that'll show you who all's the user and ownership and then you can even drill down and do more advanced permissions where you can see the owner the owning group and the others so really neat you can set a whole bunch of stuff all within this one little tool here and you, there's so many really really neat things with the actual tools you set up as far as locate search uh, these things are very granular so you can actually search specific folders and then exclude other folder names and it just you know the sky's the limit as far as this goes user actions i don't really use too much but you can definitely program custom things in here to run from here and say you know i want this directory to run a certain program there's actual things you can set up in user actions where it'll actually launch a certain program with what you're looking at in the file manager i haven't set this up yet but i'll show you that here in a second uh, you can actually look at the view like brief view or you can go detailed view and as you notice that's just the right screen here so we need to do it actually on whichever's highlighted and i'll remember that view which is really nice you can show hidden files or not show hidden files so if we're back in our home directory and let's say i didn't want to look at all these dot files i can just go you know what i don't need those just show me what's not not had the dot in front so very very powerful very easy to actually browse around and likewise you can actually come up into here and see the full path name very simplistically as well you can go to a uh, route you can go to a whole bunch of different things go forward jump back all those uh really really neat things in uh, the go command edits copy paste all the stuff that typically i would use the hotkeys for most of this stuff but uh, sometimes when you're doing selections and you want to do like an invert selection uh, you can look at that again check out the hotkeys if there's something in here you're constantly using just remember those hotkeys that'll really help you out and then file is just regular stuff now you can like create a package file so let's say i wanted to take all these and go you know what i need to compress these and create a new zip file with them so let's go ahead and uh go over to file and then pack alt shift p so let's pack these and we're going to to archive downloads.tar and you can choose what kind of uh file you want if you want Let's say you're taking these to Windows or something like that and you want to unzip them all, probably a zip file would be better. However, tar GZ gives a really good compression. So let's say we wanted to do downloads into tar.gz. So we'll hit OK. Now, instead of doing the Alt Shift, uh, the actual pack here and clicking on this, let's just go Alt Shift P for pack and then go OK. And you see how it remembered that extension. And we'll just go ahead and say overwrite because obviously the other one didn't work out because we got that huge file in there and then this should pack it all in for us and there we go so you'll see all of the downloads over into the actual left folder is where it dropped it so that's all these files over here so we can go open with and we're like what do we want to open it with and we probably want our archive manager for this guy so let's see what shows up and you'll see all those files we just packed and we could extract these do whatever we want but we're not going to do that and that's just the basis now let's go into the settings real fast just so you can see all the things you can customize so we'll go into configure crusader and this actually pops up at this very start uh so you can if you if you miss that start screen or you don't have certain tools and then you add them later you can actually come in here and uh reset them back up so the panel you can actually take away a lot of things from the panel. Let's say you didn't want a search bar in the panel. You can actually take that away. Bookmark certain things like bookmark search right here. The tabs, let's say, you know, you know I always want to use the full path name by on the tab names themselves. You see how it just says Titus, Titus, Downloads, Documents. By changing that, it'll actually change what's displayed here. Um, view, you can kind of customize all these things in here. Uh, I'm not going to go through each one of them as, you know, it's just a personal preference. Colors, you can change the colors. Uh, we'll apply changes. And as you see, it kind of changes the tabs right there from what we did. Now, this should pull in, like, it used default KDE colors. It should pull in everything. But let's say I untick this. I could actually set it to whatever I want and customize the color scheme a lot. For this, I'm just going to leave it the actual system default. General, delete mode, move to trash, or permanently delete files. 
Also, I changed the external ter terminal to Terminator because Terminator is just my personal favorite. Uh, viewer editor, uh, you can use the internal editor or you can actually change this to whatever it might be. Uh, however, I find the internal editor is just a bit faster and it's actually a really good editor. So I didn't feel the need to actually change this. Going down here, you can auto mount file systems. I don't typically like that option on as I tried it and um, I like to specify when things get mounted. So that's why I didn't do that. Archives, uh, I didn't mess with this actual tab that much, but you can enable like write support, but it says caution. Uh, failure to do the process might result in data process. Moving archives into themselves will delete them. So <laughs> pro tip, don't move the same archive into itself. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, dependencies. So this is like during the setup process, like I didn't have K, kgit and a diff utility. And I actually downloaded kdiff3 and kgit afterwards and then added those in here. I don't I still don't have a mailer or locate or update DB. So I could add those programs and then specify them in here with just clicking this and then specify on the program by just going over into here. And usually they'd be in like the, the bin directory. Uh, that's how you do that. Packers. So with RAR, I should go ahead and grab a RAR program and actually put it in here, but I haven't yet. Check some utilities. All these were pretty much uh, in there by default. User actions, terminal execution. I haven't really messed with this too much as I need to really dive deep. And this is where you put like Terminator and then dash C, and then you can do a lot of options specifying the percent sign D for a work directory and percent sign T for the actual title of an action and do some really, really neat stuff. But I, I need to mess with this a little more. And if you go start action man, this is actually another program where you can really dive deep and you see all those different uh, options for the user thing. So when I say you can dive deep, it's not just terminal, but it's a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, if you look here, copy current item to clipboard, it'll do this command and you can specify working directories and whole just a whole host of things. And like I said, I need to dive deeper into this, but uh, just know ac action man's here and then you can really customize terminal execution. And protocols, I haven't actually done anything different from the stock settings. But this is just the, the layout of Crusader. I wanted to go through it real quick just so you could kind of see and get kind of your feet wet with this. So that was Crusader. I absolutely love this software. It is amazing. I think there's a lot of benefit to it. I still use my default one on occasion uh, just for, you know, just grabbing something from downloads folder or whatnot. But when I really know that I'm going to be pushing a lot of files back and forth, I find this just saves a lot of time and headache. So I hope you enjoyed this and let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And as always, thank you to the, all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.